So what if all soil science is based on a fundamental inaccuracy? What if that was the case? How would that change your perception of what's going on right now in soil science? Because all the numbers that they've been basing things off of when it comes to counting bacteria and fungi, they have to tamp it down to a one ml or they fill it up to three or four with the liquid and then add to the, to the next level ml and they count that. doesn't matter. Same problem exists. When you've got well-structured soil, 50% of your soil can be air. Did that work on you for a second? But, but. <laughs> we condense or dissolve solar compost into that one ml or up to one ml, right? But how structured is your sample? I mean, if, if your sample is highly structured, like I just said, 50% is air and subsoil and compacted soils are all dense and you pour that unstructured soil in and it just fills the line. No tamping needed, no air. Hmm. Okay. Well-structured soils have a lot of air, you know, 50% or more. And so when we compact it into one ML, each sampling represents a completely different size space. So it's a different volume. Every year you create more structure in your soil, you skew the numbers more. If your soil is different structure from another soil, they're not comparable. They represent different soil volumes. So the numbers can't help but be wrong. Always. So numbers are abstractions and we have to be really careful about that. And yeah, a separate issue is how hard are you tamping, right? So even adding it to, you know, one ml into water, it actually exasperates the skewing because you're dissolving the structure. So you're getting more structure efficiently like dissolved. You're, you're more efficiently dissolving the structure. So it's actually making it even more skewed. So the reality is how structured a soil is determines how much of the soil profile volume you're actually measuring. So weighing the soil is also skewed by how the different minerals and soil types and have different densities. And then the moisture content is weight. Soil structure skew this as well. Uh, so comparing the numbers that way isn't gonna help you. You can't trust those numbers. So is it a perfect ML? No. But people say it's close enough. Is it equal to a gram? No. But people say it's close enough. But <laughs> diluting your one ML sample only increases the discrepancies. And so it's close enough for numerical generalizations, but our numbers will be off every time for different reasons. So we have to accept that and put that kind of to the side. We can take those numbers, but we gotta put them to the side and use other modalities. Because if it's numbers we use, we have to take it all into account and accept all of it. And that makes it so those numbers are pretty unusable. Um, there's too many variables at work. So we don't rely upon those. We look at ratios. And that's a completely different way to do it. What if you could verify if your compost was actually doing its job? What if you could verify if the inoculants, the mycorrhizal inoculants, the biofertilizers are actually worth the money spending on them? What if you could diagnose what was going wrong with the soil or wrong with the plants and fix it and exactly know what to address? It is all possible. And it's all things you can learn in the Regenerative Soil Microscopy 20-week online course that is starting September 25th this fall. Join us for the full in-depth course that pairs with the new book, Regenerative Soil Microscopy. If you want to know how to use a microscope to diagnose and evaluate your compost, your compost teas and extracts, your roots, mycorrhizal fungi, your soil, and all your amendments and biofertilizers, then this is the course for you. It's new videos at the start of every week for 20 weeks straight. And we have live Q and A at the end of every week. I'll send a survey out so everyone's questions get answered regardless of whether they are with us live because I'll move the live around so that we'll reach people in different time zones because we're a global community. It's gonna be incredible. There's live sessions that we're gonna have with other people in the group with our microscopes, you're going to be able to see the work of other people on their microscope 
in real time and develop your eye. I'm gonna be able to jump into your group and we're gonna be able to examine and troubleshoot and help everyone learn how to use microscopy to better understand their soil, their compost, their actual samples. We're gonna do a lot of work together on interpretation and diagnosis and understanding and extrapolation from these tests. We're gonna walk through it step by step together with me the author and creator of the Regenerative Soil Microscopy book, course, and methods. So you're going to see going down to the original source material, why I chose what I did, the test results that I got that led me to the choices that I made to create the methodologies we have today. It will surprise you and inspire you because we are at the cusp of a revolution in soil science. So dig deep with us this fall in regenerative soil microscopy. Explore and understand the world at a completely new level and transform your soil, transform your plants, your food, your animals, your forage, your landscape, the environment from the soil up. And we'll cover everything. Not just bright field, we'll go beyond bright field. You've waited long enough. There's dark field, there's epifluorescence so that you can see the invisible fungi, so that you can see where phosphorus goes and glows. And also biological stains, so you can verify that things are actually active, That the and, and, and without the freezing, without the liquid molten agar, these are living samples that are just diluted one to 100 and then stained. It's it's incredibly easy. It's, it's so fast and it's an all new method. So I'm so excited about this. I've been able to verify things with world renowned scientists, highly published scientists, people who have been teaching and focusing on this area of study of microscopy for 40 and 50 years. I am so excited to share this with you because we've all waited long enough to know how soil actually works, to not be fooled by the numbers and the math that has been legacied in. There is a path forward that disambiguates, that opens new doors, that pairs with DNA sequencing, that pairs with the new understanding of the way genetic transfer occurs, especially in the soil environment, the composting environment, and the rhizosphere environments. If you want to learn how to not just understand your soil, but to see that the things you're doing are actually working, that the money that you're going to spend or, or have spent was worth it so you don't get fooled again, this is the pathway. We need holistic testing. We need holistic microscopy, and we need to combine them in a new methodology, regenerative soil microscopy. I hope you join us. I'm Matt Powers, author, educator, seed saver, citizen scientist, and family guy. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you soon.